Hello there. My name is Dr. Salim Javed. I am an associate professor at the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication at Lingas Lalitha Devi Institute of Management and Sciences. We have been talking about understanding cinema and different forms, different styles involved in understanding cinema. For a long time, we have been trying to understand different story formats and we have been talking about Gustav Freitag Pyramid for the last few videos. In this video, if you can see it on your screen, this is how Freitag's Pyramid looks like, where you have exposition, then you have ex inciting incident, then you have rising action, at the apex of the structure is the climax, then you have falling, falling action and then you have resolution. This is not a perfect triangle, but it is a sort of a pyramid. Now, let us understand why, you know, it is called a pyramid, what is exposition, inciting incident. If you remember in the, in the last video, we talked about exposition in detail, but I will be recapitulating everything, so that in this video also, you know what we are talking about. Now, who was Gustav Freytag? Gustav Freytag was a prominent German novelist and critic during the 19th century who analyzed the plot structure and devised a visual tool known as Freytag pyramid, which you just saw in the structure. It looks like a, a pyramid hanging in air, but uh, there, there is another um, figure which clear cut establishes that it is a Freytag pyramid. Now, it is, what is Freytag pyramid? Freytag pyramid, pyramid is a narrative framework. Now, this is what is important that all the story formats that we have been talking about, they are, you know, narrative frameworks. They are story formats, nothing more, nothing less. They are technically, they are, they behave like a navigator for you. That if you have a destination in, in this particular case, a story, if you have a story, then these frameworks help you navigate and reach your destination called final product, uh, final draft. Final product is a later stage. It's called final draft. So, from writing point of view, the the destination is that you are done with your uh, final draft. Whereas in one of the videos, I have said that final draft is a misnomer. So you should, you know, it 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 becomes very very difficult to declare any draft as a final draft. Anyway, it is a narrative framework, you know, which has got discrete segments. Now, when you talk about Freytag's pyramid, it has got five elements, exposition, rising action, climax, falling action and denouement. We have been, uh, we have talked about exp ex exposition, but let us recapitulate it also. The narrative has to start at a specific point. Now, this line that the narrative has to start at a specific point is from writing point of view, it is, it is very, very difficult to give a start to your story. Because when you create, an, when you weave or when you create an entire story, you have lot of points from where you can begin your story, but which which, what will be the most interesting point to, to start your story with is actually a lot of, is, is actually a result of a lot of brainstorming. And, you know, this, ref, this is like in other format, it is referred as Act 1 and it has uh, crucial components which establishes your backdrop which, which establishes your temporal and its partial dimension and overall contributes to the ambience of the narrative. Now, the second part is called rising action. Now, what is a rising action? Now, we now onwards, we will understand it in detail. In the second act of Fry Attack Pyramid, denoted as rising action, the narrative progresses by introducing hurdles that impede the character's progress towards their objectives. So, the rising action or the rising movement is simply, in, in simple word, it is when your protagonist, be that male or female, irrespective of his or her gender, when your protagonist is ready to face the hurdles 
you know, when the, there are uh, obstacles in the way or when he starts meeting these obstacles, you know. So, thus as it says that hurdles that impede the character's progress towards their objective, thus building towards the primary confrontation. Now, obviously, the, the, the confrontation, even the confrontation will be introduced. So, rising action will give you an idea that what sort of problems this character is going to have and the, and the problems that your character is going to have should meet the world that you have created in your exposition. Now, suppose if you say that there is a village, you know, and there is a drought in the village and uh, people are struggling uh, to wait for the rain in that village. Now, you cannot have an alien in that story, technically. When I was narrating the first part of the, of the situation, you must be thinking of Lagan. Now, imagine Lagan having alien in it. So, Lagan in exposition part, the kind of mood it has set for the story, either you provide a chance or a possibility or you germinate some sort of an uh, ideation that this place can have something like this. Or like suppose if you really want to have a alien in that particular setting which was of Lagan, then you really need to have, you know, one of the ideas that in Indian context, writing especially in Indian context, then you need to have one f very famous old um, uh, temple in that area. Then only you can have a possible, because the background is ruler uh, and you really have to have some mystical connection of that place to have that sort of a story. Otherwise, it is impossible. Like think of Tumbad for that matter. You need to have a citadel. Uh, for that sort of a setting because that citadel will establish that it has been it, it, is, it, it has been here in this village or in this location for a long time and because it has been there for a long time thus there is a possibility of something like this uh, that, that see, seems plausible. So, when you have rising action so the the hurdles that you are giving to your protagonist or whatever the setting that you are creating, that needs to correspondence with the ambience of the narrative that I talked about in the exposition part. Now, this may sound very, you know, uh, simple that we are talking about exposition, we are talking about rising action. But when you actually start, when you actually sit down and start writing, then you realize that these things really help. It, it, it's like if I keep on telling you how to write introduction for a research paper, you know, it, it, it is that I am telling you. But when you actually sit down and you struggle with each word, when you struggle with each line and what my teachers taught me that how to write introduction or how to do review of literature, then it becomes really easy. Though there is a struggle that I am struggling, obviously there is a struggle when I am writing my research paper for the first time, there is a struggle. But because I have the guidance like these story formats, then it becomes easy. I have got a frame to, you know, check what I am doing, whether I am doing it right or wrong. So, when I say that the overall ambience of the narrative needs to correspond the kind of a rising action that you are giving or you, you are writing in your story, it needs to correspondence with setting, tone and everything. Like suppose, uh, uh, when I, re yesterday only, I, I today only rather, I saw this uh, Bhaiyaji's uh, promo and it is a beautiful promo, but I think that um, the South Indian filmmaking style has bit Manoj Vajpayee in that, uh, you know. Uh, in, in in that uh, promo. So, 
you now if you have that sort of you know a touch of south indian style filmmaking where the gamcha is like flowing and it will reach it will wrap your neck after 1 minute you know because it, it is a slow motion so then you really need to have that sort of a mounting also in the story so that is what it says that uh, whatever confrontation we are creating it needs to be in correspondence with the exposition or the introduction or the kind of the world that you are creating like uh, uh, suppose if i write a story on my life now angels will be a you know difficult entity to bring in in my story unless i am not into mysticism unless i do not go to places which are slightly uh, haunted or blessed you know extreme both the extreme or i do not share that sort of an experience with people so whatever it is the rising you know sometimes that that is what a problem comes when you start writing or when you start understanding cinema that everything is fine film starts really well but somewhere it gets lost you know you must have realized it and as a student of mass communication you you must have said it so many times that it started really well but somehow it lost track or something like this you must have read in lot of uh, screen uh, this review when you read the those on online or when you read them in newspapers or in magazines and they say that uh, it was fine everything was good but somewhere down the line it lost its charm you know all these things when people say it, that they, it lost its charm it is all because there are few things which are not in sync with each other that is what happens that's what i'm saying that if you have a confrontation that confrontation has to be in sync with the exposition now it says further the narrative intensifies as other characters are introduced including the chief antagonist and other opponents who contribute to the situation complexities of the remaining characters now you must be thinking that just now i talked about exposition now i am saying the narrative intensifies as other characters are introduced including the chief antagonist but if you see black snider's uh, beat sheet which i most of the time i refer back to it says that the entry of the antagonist is somewhere towards or or the full fledged entry of of the antagonist is either before the interval or after the interval now from step 1 to step 2 have we covered half of the film now these are the difference of approach when different story formats are understood you really have to find out you know you really have to gauge what is going on in each story format and then you realize that though there may be a obvious difference like part 1 exposition says is part 1 and the rising action says part 2 it is immediately after one another but if you gauge this particular format on black snider's format then you realize that one is in the beginning and one is almost before or after the interval in indian cinema but rising action or rising movements is clear cut accentuated when there is an antagonist now during the rising action phase the reader or reader why reader because he was a writer so the word reader is there and because we are using friartag's pyramid in understanding stories that's why there are viewers like uh, uh, in coming videos i'll be talking about how uh, friartag's videos or friartag's pyramid not friartag's video uh, friartag's pyramid can be used in marketing how by understanding like i always say that by understanding these story formats you can be a good director you can be a good writer but what if if i tell you that you can be a um, creative consultant in the world of advertising also 
I'll, I will not only give you examples, I will explain few campaigns, actual campaigns which have like Tom's, uh, which says one for one thing and how they have been using fry tags pyramid uh, strategy to, you know, to, to publicize their uh, product and utilize their market share to the fullest with the help of a story format. Now that one example, when I started reading about that example, I was also surprised to read that um, because some t even I had this understanding that if I am teaching uh, f uh, some story format, not only fat tag story format, so it need to be used only in terms of writing. But when I read Tom's campaign using fry tag pyramid, I realized that understanding the concept is important and if you are smart enough, you can apply that understanding in any of the disciplines that you have been working with. Now that is something very interesting. Now during the rising action phase, the reader is frequently provided significant elements of characters background information. Throughout the progression of the conflict, it is expected that the reader or the audience will acquire a deeper understanding of character's motivation, the character's setting, the thematic elements being examined and the potential inclusion of foreshadowing, you know, leading up to the climax. Now this is really, really interesting. Now when exposition was the very beginning element of fire attack pyramids, then we are talking about rising action which is, uh, you know, immediately after exposition part. Now, throughout the progression of the conflict, obviously there has to be a conflict, that's why it, it is called rising action. It is expected that the reader or the audience will acquire a deeper understanding of the character's motivation. Now, if there is a conflict, like if you remember, I was in one of the videos, we were talking about that uh, conflict arise and rising action is all about conflict because there is a certain set of motivation for your protagonist, be that an external motivation, be that an internal motivation, whatever it is, you know, uh, but there will be a motivation. It can be very tangible motivation, it can be intangible motivation, it can be very social, so, socialistic motivation, it can be very pragmatic motivation. You know, depending the world and the setting of the story. So, because there is a motivation, like like suppose two people fall in love with the same person, obviously these two people will have conflict. So there is a motivation of loving one person, and interestingly, the 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 motivation of two people is clashing on one person. So that's why there is a conflict, and that's why there will be a rising action part the narrative setting, the thematic elements be, being examined. Obviously, you have to examine what's going on and the potential inclusion of foreshadowing leading up to the climax. Now, before I start talking about climax, you know, exposition, then you have rising action and the third stage is climax. Like suppose if um, you can see it on your screen. Now, this is the exposition, then you have rising action, now you have climax. Now, look at this picture. If I, you and I go by our nor, normal experience that we have gained in our life, you know, we generally say, Are us film ka climax bahut achha tha. Now, the moment I say that us film ka climax bahut achha tha, so climax to last mein aata hai. And in Fry Tag's pyramid, climax is exactly in the middle of the story. And if you read other formats also, then obviously you have climax, you know, towards the end of the story and that is what our understanding of, of, of uh, watching films since childhood also says, Are I film ka climax bahut achha tha. Whereas in Fry Tax Pyramid, it is exactly in the middle of the structure or rather the highest point. So there is no denial that it is the highest point. Nobody is denying this fact that the, 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 the entire story is culminating in climax part. So there is no, no denial of this fact. Now, 
I will be talking about climax uh, to an extent uh, after some time. Now, the rising action is the subsequent narrative phase in which the fundamental conflict develops. The rising action is subsequently narrative phase in which the fundamental conflict develops. Obviously, you need to, when you, when you have named the entire section as rising action, so obviously you have to have uh, the genesis, a logical explanation of the conflict in this phase. And the reader or the or, or the audience gradually experiences the end, gradually experiences the intensifying tension that accompanies this struggle. At this stage, the basic conflict is further compounded by the introduction of impediment that impedes the protagonist. Impediment of impediment that impedes the protagonist and other characters in their pursuit of their aims. Now, this is, it is all about hurdles. It is all about a logical extension of the setting of the world. One set of story will have few sets of problems. Like suppose if you are hungry as a child, what you can be left by your parents you have no place to stay, you are hungry, you are thirsty, you are unprotected. Okay? So, your rising action will have these sort of problems and how your character will overcome from these problems like Rocky in KGF. He has got a certain set of problems that certain set of problem uh, will have a certain set of results. You know, you can play it up, you can play it down, that is a different game. But Rocky will have a different set of problems in terms of writing. You know, so they have played it up, so they have made him enter in an empire, a closed, it's a closed wall world where he needs to conquer. You know, so had that been, had that, uh, you know, world been in Delhi or Bombay, then it would have been a different or rather it would have been an underworld film or it, it had been a cop drama. To have this sort of a mounting, you need to exclude, you know, you need to seclude rather your, uh, your world which is isolated from the mainstream. And then you can have the costume, then you can have the setting of your choice. Like, like suppose if you have seen Apocalypto, uh, directed by Mel Gibson, it's a beautiful film. Now to have that sort of a setting in India, you really need to go down south. You cannot have in the Kutch of uh, Gujarat. Because Kutch of Gujarat will give birth to different sort of characters, will give birth to different issues. Whereas, if you move to the dense forest in South India, there is where you can have not only mysticism, you can have aliens, there is no doubt about it, through, um, through discovery, through a lot of other devices that goes into writing. There is where you can have a city which is, you know, buried under earth. There is where you can have a, a, a UFO waiting to take off. There is where you can turn a human into an, an animal, where you can give, where you can logically create Narsimha in a lab. You know, so you, even the geography contributes to specific type of stories. Uh, UP will create a very different kind of story, whereas MP or uh, Jharkhand will create a very different kind of stories. So, the sort of story world that is created will have that set of problems which is very familiar or in sync with the setting 
or in sync with the world that you have created. Now at this stage rising action the basic conflict is further compounded by the introduction of impediment that impede the protagonist and other characters in their pursuit of their aims. Secondary conflict typically arises from the action of antagonist. Secondary conflict typically arises from the action of the antagonist. Now this if you remember this line or rather I would request that you write down this that whenever you have like there, there are two sort of conflicts that are working in, in any film. One is obviously for the protagonist. But if you can give antagonist his or her own struggle which most of the films do use this device, it is basically secondary conflict typically arises from the action of the antagonist and other opponents who hold a lesser degree of significance. Within the framework of the dramatic structure, the rising action is a separate act or scene that is deliberately differentiated from the climax. With the, with the initiation of primary or chief action which, which is the main story, the narrative progression, the narrative progresses in terms of heightened activity leading up to the climax. All characters who have not yet been introduced should be introduced at this point of time. So we have understood in this video exposition, we have understood rising action and the relationship with the climax. Thank you very much.